with that alkalinity there are certain pain receptors shut off so you have less pain after the breathing because your body is more alkaline so that's one reason why uh, you would want to do the breathing before the ice bath and the other is that you breathe calmer after breathing you know you can breathe like one or two times per minute and that's exactly what you want in the ice bath so these are these are these are the connections between the breathing and the ice bath but do you need to do it like is the rule no there's there's like nothing dogmatic about the Wim Hof method you know maybe you notice that Wim is doing like in the end you know the recovery breath this last 15 seconds he says squeeze a little bit that's that's like that's this year you know like that's new <laughs> <laughs> but and that's but that's why we tell you also all the time you know like follow what it feels good if you want to breathe 50 times instead of 30 40 fine if you want to breathe 15 times and breathe you know fine uh, if you want to hold and squeeze fine if you don't want to squeeze fine so there's like a few dimensions within breathing you know nose in and uh, nose in, nose out, mouth in, mouth out, or nose in, mouth out. You know, nose mouth breathing. There's belly chest breathing. That's another dimension. There's faster breathing of slower breathing. That's another dimension. There's like breath hold, yes or no. That's another dimension. Then in the breath hold, uh, squeeze or not. That's another dimension. Um, you can do it this uh, sitting or lying. That's another dimension. And walking. You know, like it's another dimension. Like your position. So there's all these dimensions within breathing and what you want to do is you want to know that okay we have sympathetic parasympathetic if you feel like you know you drank too much coffee and you're like you're like bouncing back from your laptop to your whatsapp and like all the way you're a bit too much in the sympathetic you want to do something to create a little bit more parasympathetic well if you just had dinner and you have you know or a heavy lunch and you have this meeting you want to get more into your sympathetic because you have to be in action and that's that's what you want to find out what am where am i now and what does my body need now and which breathing technique do i use to actually get there um, so another question might be you know what's the difference with the power breath but a power breath is holding your breath on the breath in Breathing out is the parasympathetic engager. This is what you just said. You know, like every time we breathe in, we go a little bit more in the sympathetic. Every time we breathe out, a little bit more in the parasympathetic. If you breathe in, your heartbeat goes up, your blood vessels contract, you get a little bit more adrenaline. If you breathe out, exactly the opposite. So it's very fine, fine work what happens inside. Um, <clears throat> yes, please. But um, so the question is: uh, in the beginning, I got more dizzy, and now I don't anymore. This can be of, of uh, various things. If your body is more acidic, you have to breathe more to become dizzy. So that could be the case. Uh, and also you know like sometimes you do get dizzy and sometimes you don't but you really sense it like you don't become dizzy at all yeah i can breathe for a long time and not get dizzy i mean i, I, I am anemic so whether that means i just can't get on yeah, so it could be because you don't breathe deep enough. Yeah, no, well, that's what I'm asking too, whether the, my technique, but I'm thinking like that, I'm doing it all right. Yeah, and you're breathing through the belly, because if you only breathe through the chest, this is 30%. Yeah. So you want to use your belly, yeah. and then the chest, yeah. and then, you know, like, let it resonate in your head. Mark has a very big space in his chest, so this might be able to influence because you have really a lot of space in your chest. I, this is why the first day I, took, I had the idea that you didn't use your belly, but it's because there's a lot of space for your lungs 
mm. inside your chest. So maybe this relates to each other. I don't know. Yeah. If you breathe more to the belly, you will get more air in. You will get so it can be like not getting enough air in, or your body is more acidic because I know you have Lyme, so maybe that you know like that influences. And then and then well, sorry, and then how you can but what you can do like the power breath or the brown fat activation is where you breathe in and hold your breath. This is where you go a little bit more into your sympathetic. So that could be, you know, like if I squeeze, I like, I get really dizzy. Yeah, so that is something you can do. And it's not per se about getting dizzy, yeah. right? I'm, I'm just wondering if I do the, the breath out, without getting dizzy, I still get some benefits. Of course, yeah, you still get benefits, although you don't get dizzy because you know, everybody is different and there's also the concept of, you know, my dizziness, if you would feel it, you would say like, that's not dizzy, you know, like, so that's very personal. You definitely get get the, the, the benefits if you don't feel dizzy. Um, I think mostly I've had a lot of anxiety in my life I breathe in the chest. Hi. And this has certainly got the force and more I'm breathing. But when I'm not consciously doing it, does it matter that you still can still habitual that you're still breathing mostly through your chest? Does it or does it um, spoil the effect of doing this? That no normally you're breathing not through your stomach. Um, yes, um, I would say so. You know, like the question is, if I breathe chest only and don't use my belly, uh, is that not beneficial for me? That is not beneficial. You want, you know, you in the beginning you can learn everything. But if you are a chest breather, you can gain a lot from learning to breathe through the belly. And at a certain moment, it goes without thinking. And that's where you want to go to, where you become like unconsciously... Conscious. Competent. Uh, competent, thank you. That was it. Yeah. Thanks, brother. Mm -hmm. Unconsciously competent. So you don't think about it, but you do it right. And until then... Yeah, you know, like, hey, wait, where's my breath? And this is why it's so beneficial to do every morning a bit of breath work, you know, four rounds, perfect. If you don't have time, do one round or two shorter rounds like brown and fat activation, because that makes you breath aware the whole day. Like I do five minutes only in the morning, five minutes exercise, five minutes breath work, but over the day, more than an hour. Because I'm like, you know, you're conscious of your breathing. And it starts with that, with being conscious of your breathing. You know, like, uh, we're all fucked but aware this time. This is what Wim once said. Still fucked up but aware this time, you know? And that is very interesting because, say, uh, I'm very impatient, but I'm unaware of the fact that I'm impatient. I'm a lot, you know, like, more of an asshole than when I'm impatient, but I'm actually aware about the fact that I'm impatient. And the shitty thing is that for your mind, it doesn't work like that because you're aware you start to like, oh, damn, you know, like almost 50, my whole life I've been doing this wrong and you start to beat yourself up again. But it's actually very cool to be aware about stuff like that. And then every time you are aware, you just, yeah, you, f you focus on breathing to the belly. And you can do it like 20 times a minute in a day and your body learns extremely fast. You've, you've been seeing this, like what you've done with an ice bath, honestly, I haven't done that yet. You know, and I'm the instructor. So you're, it's, it's really, your, your body learns, learns very, very fast. So uh, you can learn all this. Yes, wait. Yes, the sympathetic. So, um, my question is, you mentioned someone running a marathon. So, how would you choose which breathing method? Well, as a preparation for a marathon, I would just breathe as much as I can and just, you know, like, so no follow your feelings, start with basic. Tower for this, no, um, it's it's too temporarily, you know, like if you do like this, the power breath or the brown fat activation, which engage more of your sympathetic because you breathe in and then hold your breath. That's one reason. And then that squeezing, that is also an extra engager of the sympathetic. 
But if you do an hour of breathing and then it takes another two hours to get to the to actually start running, you know, that effect that is like really short term. The the effect of the oxygen in your body and your muscle tissue is more long term. Um, just to share. Yes. I, I have the feeling that I can hold a lot of air in my lungs as well. And Kim was saying that this is probably why some people don't feel dizzy. And I have a hard time to feel dizzy. But when you make the count, oh, how many breaths you can take in one minute? Sometimes I can do less than one. When you finish, I'm still feeling my lungs. Mm. So I take one minute and a half to fill and get out. Wow. And I have to, in a hard time, I had to push a lot so I can get dizzy. Mm. So maybe it's and it I could be. Felt that I was breathing to my belly. Mm -hmm. So when I'm trying to push real hard, I do fast only breathing with my my stomach. So yeah. I don't know if it's correlated or something. If I'm, I'm not something sure. To that measure how much I can, I don't know how many balloons yeah, I, can, yeah, yeah. I can feel after. Because my chat is spammed like a lot. Yeah. So I, it sounds very healthy, that yeah. first of all, and... Feeling very happy, always. I, oh, I have the feeling... <laughs> okay. I have the feeling that, you know, and that's that's my truth, there's no like scientific evidence, but if I live healthier, I get dizzy less fast. Right? And if I like, say I slept two hours and I had like a lot of drinks last night, I do the breathing, I'm like, oh, you know, with a five times breathing, I'm almost passing out. But that's my personal feeling. How, how do you feel, you know, like... Well, what? I, I've um, always had low blood pressure, and so when I've given blood and things like that, of course, I've fainted, and I've fainted several times. Um, and that's to do with blood pressure, and I wonder if blood pressure is also... Well, yeah, it's a very, a very good question, because... Um, I've, I've measured that blood pressure is going down after the breathing because a higher blood pressure is basically too much in the sympathetic. Uh, yeah, your, your vessels are contracting and, and so the blood pressure goes up. So I've, I've measured that a, a few times already and I can really say if you have high blood pressure just do this breathing and you will be fine. But what with low blood pressure? I don't know. I get dizzy. Yeah. And do, have you be, have you passed out also? Not doing breathing. But and have you, do you measure your blood pressure? No, only on occasion we go to the doctor. But every time I've had my blood pressure down, they said, "Oh, this is really low." And I said, it's a worry. It's not worry. Because what I hope. What I hope is that it resets you. So if you've too low of a blood mm. pressure, it brings it up, and the other way around. Yeah. But no, I you know like no, I've no like any information. Not enough. I know about the high blood pressure. Tested it a few times, but not about low blood pressure. And I I think you know like to be safe, I, you know if you have low blood pressure, you really want to lie down because I think the chance of passing out is is a lot higher. Yes. Before doing not a marathon but some sport football game or so, what is the method that you recommend breathing exercise? Yes, one, or just, just whatever. Just, uh, standard yeah, and we, we, you know, we have the basic breathing, we have the power breath and we have the, the, the brown fat activation. You can mix it, you know, you know, just, it's about first breathing more and then holding your breath. And do you do the breath hold on the breath out or the breath in? Trust your body. And then, you know, after that, because the power breath is just squeezing. You want to squeeze or not? Trust your body. And then after the squeezing, the power breath is just breathe out and start a new round. And the basic breathing has the recovery breath of 10, 15 seconds. You know, like if you do the power breath, personally, I always do recovery breath after that. And if it feels good, I hold it for another minute there. You know, so it's about just if you follow your body, Maybe not just, but if you follow your body, whatever happens, nose in or mouth in, you know, just, it's, it's all good. As long as you breathe a lot first and then hold your breath.